proving that the statement is true is usually harder than proving that the statement is false. A single example is not sufficient now. It is often useful to follow the following general approach. 1. Introduce some notation for the quantities in the problem. 2. Reformulate the theorem using relevant definitions and theorem. What does the theorem mean? What do we need to prove? Uh, and 3. Prove the theorem. If you have done steps 1 and 2 correctly, then usually the third step is not that difficult anymore. Let us take a look at the procedure for the following example. So, I just have some example theorem uh, of linear algebra just to show the whole procedure. So, we say that the numbers on the diagonal of a diagonal matrix D are all eigenvalues of D. So, we have some diagonal matrix D, they have some numbers on the diagonal, and all those numbers are eigenvalues of D. So, what are we going to do? First, introduce some notation, then translate this a bit. What does it mean? And then that's most of the work, because then the proof uh, will be very, very short. So let us start with the introduction of some notation. So we are talking about uh, matrix D, so it's convenient to say, OK, we have an arbitrary n by n matrix D, uh, and then we, uh, we give the numbers of on the diagonal of the matrix a name, we say our matrix D uh, has numbers D1 up till Dn on the diagonal. So that is the matrix where we are talking about, an arbitrary n by n matrix. Then two, the translation stop. What does it mean uh, to be an eigenvalue? Well, lambda is an eigenvalue of a matrix A, if and only if A times V equals lambda times V, where V is not the zero factor. So then that means that you are an eigenvalue. Now, then, you know you can rewrite it this a bit. That means that a minus lambda times i n times vector v equals a zero vector for some v not equal to the zero vector. So a minus lambda i n times vector has a non-trivial solution. So that means it's the matrix a minus lambda i n needs to have a free variable, because otherwise you would only have the trivial solution. So that's the translation step. If uh, lambda is an eigenvalue of the matrix, then that means that a minus lambda times i n has a free variable. So then the proof is rather straightforward. Just complete compute d minus uh, uh, this uh, dk times i n. So we take an arbitrary dk. You have your numbers on your diagonal. Just pick one, whatever you like. Let's take dk somewhere, and then we compute a minus dk times i n. So what do we get? We get a mess here, d1 minus dk, we get everywhere a mess, but somewhere over here we get a dk minus dk, and here again mess, with zeros above and below. But you have dk minus dk, that's zero, so you have a column with all zeros. So your a minus dk times i n will have a free variable. So you see, d minus dk times i n has a free variable, so that means that dk is an eigenvalue of d. Now, your k was arbitrary, so you could pick any number on the, on the diagonal. The size of your matrix was also arbitrary, so that means that you have shown now for any number on the diagonal of a uh, matrix d uh, that this is automatically an eigenvalue of d, which is what you needed to show.